Good morning, TNS family. We are so glad that you're able to join us here today through our online worship service from the comfort of your own home, wherever you may be today. We're glad that you are a part of us here this morning. I just want to share a couple of announcements with you this morning. One of those being that we are meeting every week through Zoom. So if you're children, students, adults, we have stuff going on for everybody. So that is a, a great way for us to be able to see each, your faces and you see us is through those Zoom meetings. So please uh, call the church office, uh, go online through Facebook. We have all the information, the details on how to connect with those. Uh, we also uh, want to tell you of a great opportunity this coming Sunday, right? So some of you, or most of you have heard of Where's Waldo? Well, next Sunday, May 24th, uh, we want to invite you to engage in a family outdoor activity that we're calling Where's Pastor Blank, right? So don't miss this family social distancing fun family activity next Sunday uh, from 10 a.m. to noon here in Tatchby, 
right? So for those of you who choose to participate, we ask that you join us at the 9 a.m. premiere service and then make your way to TNAS by 10 a.m. There you will receive your Where is Pastor Blank instructions, our official packet for them. From there, you will travel around Tehachapi all over following the clues provided to find one of our TNAS pastors. Challenges, fun challenges, and prizes will be handed out. Also, we will be partaking of communion, and lunch will, will be provided to all the families who participate. At the end of the challenge, around 12 noon, everyone will drive back to the church, receive your lunch and communion in a drive through fellowship. All just to make you aware, all of our social distancing and protective measures will be adhered by those assisting you in this search for Waldo. I mean, no, not Waldo. I mean, Pastor Blank. <laughs> so just watch your email this week. Look on Facebook, all of our social media uh, for all the specific details that will be happening and that will be coming forward this coming week. I also want to remind you that we are here for you. We want to pray with you. Um, anything that you are in need of, whatever it is that you're in need of, please reach out to us. Uh, call the church office. Uh, I believe most of you have our, our personal uh, numbers and emails for the pastors here at the church. So please reach out to us if you need anything. The number here at the church is 661-822-4426 and also through email at tnasoffice at gmail.com. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Now this morning, will you join me in prayer? Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, this morning that we're able to come together once again through, uh, through the internet. God, what a great thing that we can still have church, that we can still meet together. Maybe not the way that we want to, but Lord, this is, this is still an amazing way for us to be able to connect with each other and with you. And so, Father, we pray this morning that you will uh, bless this time that we have here together. God, we thank you for the great opportunities that we've had to be able to, to meet through, through Zoom and be able to see the faces of, uh, for myself, our students, and some of our adult teachers to be able to see their, their, their students, their people, and their, through Zoom. And so, God, we just thank you for that great opportunity. God, we do thank you for what you are doing, what you will continue to do. God, we love you. We praise you. And now, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will speak through Pastor Rob as he brings a great message this morning. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name because you are worthy of our worship and our praise. And God, we pray these things in the powerful name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, TNS family and friends. Thank you for joining us today for our worship uh, service together. May God's word come forth from God as we share from his word this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and today we choose. We choose not to, uh, not, not due to our own circumstances, not because of uh, uh, all of life is perfect, not because we have everything that we want, the way we want it and when uh, we want it. No, today we choose as a matter of our will, we plan and we determine, we believe and we trust God, and because of this faith, working in and through our lives, we choose today to rejoice and be glad in it. Tina's family, this is the day the Lord has made. Uh, make it a point. Plan it. Execute it. Walk in it. Rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you again today to the Tehachapi Church of the Nazarene Premier Services. Uh, what a joy to know that you, our church family and friends, are with us this day. I'll never forget it was years ago. <laughs> I was only about 14 or 15 years old, and my best friend's dad decided to take me and my best friend, his son, to an Angels baseball game. We made our way out to the stadium. We parked in a sea of cars, traversed our way to our seats, and enjoyed the game. Upon the completion of the game, we enjoyed some fireworks, and when the fireworks were over, we made our way out of the stadium and headed back to the car. It didn't take long, though, <laughs> to realize that in our excitement to get to the stadium, we hadn't taken a mental note of where we had parked our car. We made our way out to the letter and the row that we thought that we parked in. We walked up and down the aisles, navigating the cars that were leaving and, and, and continued searching for the car that we came in. 
Soon we began to make our way into areas that we were pretty sure that we hadn't parked in, uh, thinking that maybe we had been mistaken. And after nearly an hour, at least three full trips around the stadium, we made our last attempt around to the front of the stadium. By this time, most of the cars had, ex uh, had exited the ballpark, and there were just a few cars that were left in the area that we found our car in. We didn't know about GPS back then, but who doesn't love GPS, especially when it's working reliably? Most of us would answer in the positive. We know that navigating can be a real challenge, especially when we are unfamiliar with the territory or the stadium that we're searching throughout to find our parking location. Today we are promised a navigational helper in God's Word. In our text this morning, Jesus is sharing what is to come. There, there's something that's getting ready to happen, and he's sharing that with his disciples. He tells his disciples that the Father is going to give them something. What he gives them, I want you to know today, he gives us also. The Father will give them and us a helper, not a temporary helper that just gets us through the short-term problems. No, this is a helper that will be with us, helping us, advocating for us, reminding us, and guiding us to navigate the complexities of the world that we live in. The word for this helper is paraclete. You've heard that before. It is the one who comes alongside, and this helper is with us Forever, the Word tells us. I can't tell you in strong enough words what a tremendous and powerful promise this is. A helper, counselor, a comforter, someone that we all could greatly benefit from during the days that we are living in, these days that are of our lives. In reading from the Word today, I would direct your attention to John 14, 15 through 21. John 14, 15 through 21. It reads this way. If you love me... Don't forget that. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you, and after a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. This, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Lord, we're so thankful for your word. We're thankful for how, how penetrable it is, Lord, into our lives. Lord, you bring promises to us, Lord, that give us hope for tomorrow, that encourages us, that gives us the strength that we need to, to keep moving forward, to carry on. We're grateful for your word. We're grateful for the impact the word has on us this day. Lord, would you be our honored guest as we share in your word this day, and we thank you for it. Bless now as we receive, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, there's just nothing worse than feeling alone. If you've ever uh, known the pain of losing a loved one, you know what it means to have your normal become something that you never were thinking it would become. And we can be alone in so many ways. We can be alone through loss, and we, uh, and we can sense loneliness when there is no one to understand what we are going through. We can feel the sense of being on our own when a, a new reality exists that we find difficult to navigate. There's no doubt that for many through this time of distancing, that people are feeling very lonely, uh, secluded with uh, only our own thoughts, no real meaningful contact with others. For many, their once full lives have been replaced with a few walls and the same backyard and the same old TV channels with no real hope for what is to come. The daily news is just doom and gloom, and it weighs heavy on our hearts and minds. It's at times like these uh, that many are searching, many are seeking comfort for the loss 
of the life that they once knew. It's at times like these when some feel all is lost and that life may never be the same. And it does not only require that we are not in close contact with others. There are times that even in the midst of or presence of others, even while walking through a crowd of people that we know, we can feel lonely and not engaged. It's just a fact that there are times in our lives when we're going to need some assistance. We're going to need someone to help to lead us out of our pain and show us that there is hope and that there is comfort, that we have someone that has our best interests in mind, no matter what we are going through, and that someone is there for us even as we go through it. In the text this morning, Jesus is preparing his disciples to be able to continue on in his absence. He's going and they are staying. And they are going to need a new way to see their own reality. Pain and sadness are about to hit. They will be scattered. They will not understand. There will be a tremendous sense of loss and they will need something, something that abides, something that is with them forever. They're going to need to be reminded that there is something, or better said, someone that will come alongside and will guide them, steer them, comfort them, lift them above and through the situations that they will find themselves in. The promise has a prerequisite, though. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You see, God's will is in his word, his commandments. In the new covenant, God writes his commandments on the hearts of his followers, these commandments often have to do with the inner life, not only the outward circumstances, and really regardless of what we go through in this life, obedience to God's word is the most important thing. Jesus does not separate love from action. How will I know that my love for God is real? Well, I will obey. I will keep intact what God has required of me. And the good news is this, I will not have to do it alone. <laughs> No matter the situation, I have a helper that is with me continuously, and I will need his help for sure. I, I will constantly need to be reminded of his presence, his leading, and his advocacy, because I will often find myself adrift, off course, and wandering. Uh, there's an old favorite hymn by many. It, it says it this way. It says, O oh, to grace, how great a debtor, Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. And then it says this, prone to wander. He, the, 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 the hymnist says, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. He says, seal it for thy courts above. The, the, the words there that we can that we can so identify with, prone to wonder, wander. <laughs> Not wonder, but to wander. Lord, I feel it. Oh, how we know that feeling of being adrift, wanting to go our own way, as it were. It is in direct opposition to the commandments of God. And Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But Jesus doesn't just look for blind obedience. Jesus knows what his disciples will need. And Jesus knows that in order to keep those commandments, that his disciples will need help. They will need assistance. They will need to be reminded. They will need the one who comes alongside. Guidance for staying on track. Years ago, I had the opportunity to attend one of our general assemblies in the Church of the Nazarene. It was held in Orlando, Florida. We had a day where we were able to go out and travel a little bit. So a couple of us loaded into our rental car and made our way to Cocoa Beach, Florida. <laughs> we wanted to see where Major Nelson and Jeannie hung out. <laughs> Sorry, old person reference, but it didn't take us long uh, the time that we spent at Cocoa Beach. It wasn't that impressive. So we decided to run across the state over to Clearwater, Florida. 
In, in those days, we didn't have Google Maps on our flip phones. <laughs> uh, so I usually took my TomTom -tom with me, my GPS navigational device. It, it would navigate for me, and I would not need my own paper map. Does anyone in, still use paper maps? <laughs> That's what the pockets behind our driver and passenger seats were for. You'd keep your map book in those pouches Anyway, we were making our way over to the Gulf side uh, of the state, and as I made my way along the interstate, I noticed that for some reason I had gone off course. <laughs> I was no longer on the interstate, but I was driving alongside the freeway. My navigational device showed me that I was driving through lakes and over terrain that was definitely not on the Highway 60 that I was supposed to be on. I was now driving in Old Tampa Bay. According to my GPS, my rental car was now a boat. <laughs> the point really is this. I, I needed to be reminded that regardless of what things look like, how things feel, or what I'm currently going through, that no matter my circumstances and the challenges that I'm facing, Jesus said in verse 16 that he would ask the Father, and the Father would give us another helper, an advocate, someone that is in the midst of our loneliness, in the, in the middle of our muddle, <laughs> when we find ourselves at the end of our senses, when our rental car becomes a rental boat, and the road that we are on looks nothing like what it was supposed to look like. The Word says that we have help. And this helper isn't just in times of trouble, no. Not just when I'm at my end. The Word says that this helper is forever. And when all the other road signs are leading in the wrong directions, this helper, the Word says, is the spirit of truth and this paraclete, the spirit of truth, brings to our lives and impresses upon each one of us truth. It is how we can know that no matter the circumstances that we find ourselves in, the truth or the spirit of truth, well, he abides with us, never leaves us, always guides us, comforts and sustains us. This is the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, the spirit of truth is not for everyone. The, the helper is for those who love and keep his commandments. May we never forget that. Uh, the world, not knowing him, cannot have this relationship with him. He, he says that for his disciples, there will come a time they will not see him. This really must have been confusing to them, which we can see in their lack of understanding when they ask questions like, where are you going, Lord? How can we know where you are going? Thomas asked him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And even though we have history on our side, even though we have God's word and can understand what Jesus is meaning when he said he was leaving, we find ourselves at times wondering, where is Jesus gone? Why is he not speaking or helping me in the midst of my struggle? We ask those kinds of questions. Uh, Jesus assures us, though, that the spirit of truth is coming, <laughs> that he will never leave us or forsake us. He told us, his followers, he told his followers upon his leaving the earth that he would be with them always, even unto the ends of the earth. How is this possible? Well, for those who love him and keep his commandments, the spirit of truth has come. Our Lord no longer walks the dusty trails going from here to there, speaking to this group or that group. Our Lord now dwells within us. The Spirit of truth dwells in us and is continually with us forever. Sometimes we just need to be reminded. One writer shares a story that relates this way. He says, stashed away in his uh, drawer somewhere around his house, now nearly forgotten, is a batch of old 45 RPM records from the 50s and the early 60s. Worn and scratchy, long since outmoded uh, by the new digital technology of compact discs and audio files, he says that these primitive vinyls were once the jewels 
of a great treasure trove, Elvis grinding out hound dog, Buddy Holly and the crickets, hiccuping Peggy Sue, uh, Chuck Berry's joyful hot licks in uh, Maybelline, and the coaster's slapstick tour de force, Charlie Brown, uh, the mournful tears on my pillow by little Anthony and the Imperials, uh, the impenetrable and probably scandalous Louis Louis by the Kingsmen, and the teenage sounds of the Paris sisters, I love how you love me. They are all there and more. He's, he goes on to say that here and there in this dusty stack of records, one can find an occasional recording by the great blues master Jimmy Reed. Uh, a sharecropper's son, he shares that Reed brought his harmonica and guitar-driven rhythm and blues of the Mississippi Delta into the popular rock and roll mainstream. He relates, he says that in my high school, he says my high school friends and I, fancying ourselves as budding rock and roll bands, he says we would play and replay these recordings over and over like Big Boss, uh, Big Boss Man, Bright Lights, Big City, Hush Hush. He and his friends, they'd attempt to imitate Reed's rhythm uh, his rhythms on their cheap silver tone electric guitars, attempting in vain, he says, to capture the pain soaked cries of his mahogany voice in our too tight suburban throats, he says. However, he goes on to say, in placing the phonograph needle again and again in the grooves of Jimmy Reed's records, he tells, uh, he says, we begin to notice something curious. If you listen very carefully, there would sometimes, there could sometimes be heard ever so faintly in the background a, a, a soft woman's voice murmuring in advance of the next verse of the song. The story that grew from this explanation was that Jimmy Reed was so absorbed in the bluesy beat and the throbbing guitar riffs of his music that he simply could not remember the words of his own songs. He needed help with the lyrics, and the woman's voice was none other than that of his wife, devotedly coaching her husband through the recording sessions by whispering the upcoming stanzas into his ear as he sang. You see, from our text this morning, Jesus was telling his followers that the active role of the Spirit of Truth would be, in effect, to whisper, to remind us of the lyrics of the gospel song into our ears into the ears of those who loved him and keep his commandments. When Jesus was present with his disciples, it, it, was, that, it was he that instilled within them the right words. It, it was Jesus that coached them through the proper verses. He taught them uh, God's commandments and showed them the way through his own life, lived in front of them. But now, Jesus was facing his death on a cross. Now he was drawing near to his time of going away. Now his followers would be on their own and without him, the task of reminding them, well, being with them and leading them and dwelling them would be handed over to the Holy Spirit. You see, we have him today, you and I, all of us together. We have him today. We, his followers, we that love him and keep his commandments, we can hear his voice this day that we are living in. If we find ourselves sinking into despair, he is with us. If we are consumed with the, word, with the world's troubles, and it is leaving us afraid and worried about what tomorrow will bring. He is with us. He is that quiet voice that is reminding us that he is here with us. We can trust him. We can call upon him during times of trouble. He promised that we would not be left as orphans. We are his and he is ours. I, I find it interesting that Jesus started this dialogue the same way that he ends it for today's passage. He starts in verse 15 and then reiterates in verse 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And then in verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. 
Can you hear that quiet voice disclosing himself to you this day amidst all the noise of the world that's around us? Can you hear it over the political wranglings that are so prevalent in our day? There's a lot of noise going on right now. It can make you feel off course, worried, frustrated, and even angry. But that small voice is calling, reminding us that for those that love him and keep his commandments, his voice is reminding that he is in the Father and we are in him and he is in us. There's another song that came to mind the other day. I woke up one morning as I was contemplating uh, this service and this passage. I couldn't remember the song though. Uh, I hadn't heard it in a long time. I I had never heard it Uh, till some 30 years ago when one of my pastors asked me to sing it for a service. Uh, The other day as I was thinking about it, I I couldn't remember the name of it. I began to hum it. And and the melody of the song began to ring up in my ear. I could hardly remember any of the words, but after I hummed it a few times, I then recalled part of the chorus. So I looked it up. You know, we can Google anything today. And the song is very fitting It's aptly called, Remind Me, Dear Lord. The second verse says this, Nothing good have I done to deserve God's own Son. I'm not worthy of the scars in His hands. Yet He chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead. Why He loved me, I just can't understand. And then the chorus says this, Roll back the curtain, of memory now and then show me where you brought me from and where I might have been remember I'm human and humans forget so remind me remind me dear Lord oh I I pray today may we each be reminded today of how much we love the Lord and in keeping in step with Him, the Spirit of Truth, our Advocate, our Helper, our Paraclete, the One who reminds us that we are in Him and He is in us, comforting us and directing us into the truth. No matter where we might find ourselves today, you see, we're human. And you know what? Sometimes humans do forget. Can you hear him speaking that quiet voice, reminding us whose we are? For those who love and keep his commandments, he is with us always. Hear his voice this day. Love and obey his word, for he abides. He is with us. Can you hear him today? He is speaking. Listen to his voice. Love and obey him and allow him to speak his comforting words into your heart. And then let me pray for you today. Father, we're grateful for this day. We are so grateful and thankful for your word. We're so thankful that you didn't just leave us, it says, as orphans. You said that you wouldn't. But Lord, you said that uh, there was something coming our way. You said that you would go to the Father and the Father would give to us the spirit of truth, a comforter, a paraclete, one who reminds us, Lord, of whose we are. And Lord, you give us direction. When we feel we're off course, when we're no longer on the road that we thought we were supposed to be and our car has become a boat, (laughs) Lord, you lovingly bring us back. You lovingly steer us and guide us back to the right ways. Lord, we're living in a mixed up world today. There's a lot of trouble. But Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You are with us always guiding and directing us. Lord, may we be reminded today that you are with us. And Lord, as we gather with our families, whatever it is that we'll be doing this week, may we hear that still small voice guiding and directing us, giving us the the next stanza to the good news gospel that we'll share with others. We're grateful and we're thankful for your word. Bless these, your people, who join us today. And Lord, may you bring us back together Once again, we call upon you, Lord. We plead with you, Lord, that we would be open again and be able to meet as your congregation here at Tinez. We're grateful and we're thankful for your word. Bless these, your people, as we make our way through this day and bring us together again soon, we pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. There's going to be, uh, both services will be available at 9 and 1045, but we sure do want to invite you out to Where's Waldo? Well, wait a minute. It's not Waldo. Where's Pastor Blank? <laughs> it's going to be a fun time where we gather here at 10 o'clock next week. So go to the 9 o'clock service, uh, or later on after we meet at 10 o'clock, you can Watch the 1045 service, but we're going to have a great time. It's kind of a run through our town to find different things and get prizes, and then we'll meet back here for a drive through communion and uh, a place where you can uh, get your lunch that day at no cost to you. We're going to feed you next week. All the precautionary measures will be taken to guard against any of the, any of the flu, all that stuff, the coronavirus and all that. So we will take care to be sure that uh, we have all that uh, done correctly for you. You'll drive through, receive your communion and your lunch for the day and then head on out. So have a great week this week and we'll see you next week as we hang out a little bit together. And so God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time in his name. Amen.